We're down in central Queensland at the moment, Rockhampton's just down there, and I've been given a waypoint. I've chucked into the VMS, and that's where Graham's gonna meet us for this trip. Now, he said he's got something to show me, some sort of surprise, some sort of secret. I don't really know what he's talking about, and it's got me kind of worried. But we're only about a few hundred metres from that waypoint now, so I reckon we'll catch up pretty soon and start the adventure. That's right, but I'm not alone. I'm with my mate Barney from Legendex. We're trying to locate a short little hairy bloke we know. Hey Barney, you got a copy mate? Sure do buddy, how you going? Yeah, good mate. I think if the GPS is right mate, we're coming up to that waypoint, should just be at the top of this hill. Oh yeah, is that the one Graham gave you? Yeah, that's right mate. I don't know what he's up to, but he's got a surprise, he reckons. Yeah, Sean, you hit the nail on the head mate. I cannot wait to get behind the wheel. And this is going to be perfect because we're tackling the inland tracks around Rockhampton, onto Byfield National Park, and then onto your old stomping ground, mate, Five Rocks, which I've never seen. Let's get into it. We've not even hit the tracks yet. You can already see that this region is such a spectacular place with rivers, grassy plains, wetlands, and an absolute abundance of bird life. You may have noticed something different. Yep. I'm towing a camper trailer, and that's because Stony Creek said, Hey Sean, this camper is so easy to get around and so easy to set up, why don't you borrow it and give it a go? So here it is, and so far, so good. Copy Sean, eh? Yeah mate, gotcha. Hey, believe it or not, through this long grass, there is a bit of a hill down here. An uphill or a downhill? Uh, no, it's uphill mate, uphill, short and sharp. Ah, cool. The good news is we've got some inside information from some local mates where we can find some awesome tracks and it's not much further and it's time to engage for wheel drive. How good does that black paintwork look on my new rig? It's almost too flash for me. I saw wheels in the air, there's dust. Heaps of traction though, Sean, big mobs of traction, mate. Yeah, cool mate, um, 400 horsepower, here we come. My turn and I'm into it. But I've got the trailer so it's all about traction and momentum here. Making it look easy, champ. Well done. <laughs> yes, made it. That's quite a challenge with the old trailer on the back. Yeah, look good from down here, buddy. Up you come, Barney. Go berserker, Barney. <laughs> Barney absolutely eats it. Walk in the park. It's always worth getting some local knowledge because otherwise we would never have found this awesome little track. Even though I'm a local up here, there's just so many secrets to the central Queensland coast. Hey lads, we've got a little creek crossing coming up here and then we've got to turn hard left. Sean, I would suggest you stick out to your right, mate. Might take it a bit wide. This region is absolutely littered with little creeks just like this one. But some of the entries and exits are really steep. Graham's D-Max handles this one with no problem. But now he's got to negotiate some trees without getting paddle damage. Graham's clear, but I'm going to find it a little bit more difficult to manoeuvre with the trailer behind. Let's see how it goes. Yep, there's no way I can make that left turn without damaging the trailer or the vehicle. I think I've um, hard up against that tree. We need to do something here. You can see where that recent cyclone's come through here. The floods have come right up through here. And of course knocked all these trees over. So they're facing the way Sean o wants to come in. No good, we'll cut them out of the way. Cut a bit of a pass, only a couple of branches. These things are like weeds, they'll come straight back again. With those pushed over trees and dead branches removed, I'm able to manoeuvre the 80 and trailer to squeeze through this creek bed. Go, pitch are perfect. Barney follows up the back without a problem. And it looks like he's got some fancy new bar work on the Spartan. I suppose that's for the extra protection he needs, especially in these environments. With the amount of rain they've had in this area recently, it really doesn't take long for the tracks to almost disappear under the new growth, particularly if they haven't been driven in a while, just like this one. You've got to sort of follow your nose through this grass, folks. Um, there is a definite track here, though. Overgrown. Looks like snake territory, boys. I think I stay in the car. It's always best to move slowly through the thick scrub like this because sometimes it's just so hard to see what's hidden up front. Just like this big drop off. I'm 
sure where I'm going here. I'm just kind of following my nose at the moment. What Graham really wants to do is point those tyres down the ruts so he can line the D-Max up nice and straight. Then first gear low range in the auto and basically feather the brake so he doesn't skid. Well, everything's moving. And he's down safely without a hitch. <laughs> Talking of hitch, it's my turn with the trailer. One of the hardest things about driving a trailer through terrain like this right, is not getting the hitch hung up on ruts. So what I want to do is try and tackle the rut on a slight angle and give it the berry so I don't get stuck on the trailer's hitch. Oh, there's a little bit of scraping, but I made it through easy. There we go, a bit of bulldozing. Look at these trailers are built well. Tell you what, if you want R&D testing, this is where you take them. Barney's turn, he's done plenty of four-wheel driving like this, so he should find it easy. Barney absolutely loves his stuff. And just like that, he's done it. Ooh. Ah, that's good. We're up on another tiny little creek and a fairly steep exit to get out. Graham's fine in the D-Max. But when you're towing a trailer, you really have to be aware of entry and departure angles, or you could end up burying your hitch. We're up through this one though, now for Barney. Just listen to that exhaust grunt. Hey, we've got a bit of a downhill into a creek here, mate. It's directly down as well, directly down, uh, and then hard left, mate. Yeah, copy, mate. I might let you tackle that first before I come down with the trailer. Soon we're up on a larger creek, and it looks like we have to drive up it for some distance. You know what I like to do before any creek crossing? You've heard me say it before. Graham drops in first with the D-Max. Oh, yeah, that's a deep little section. Oh, we has gone. <laughs> yeah, that's quite deep. That's wicked. That's so cool. <laughs> That's the bee's knees. I'm loving this brand new D-Max. I tell you, in this creek, Shorty would have leaked like a sieve by now. You saw me take my seatbelt off there now. I'm not saying that's something you have to do or it's even standard practice, but for me, any water crossing or anything I'm gonna do near water, I just get rid of that seatbelt. I just think it's one of those things you don't wanna be worrying about. If, and I'm not saying it's never gonna happen, but if things go pear-shaped. Graham's giving me the okay and I'm dropping in too. Holy heck, straight down. Straight down. I just absolutely love this kind of driving. It's super technical, but just good, honest fun. My plan is to go a lot wider than the other guys and keep on that throttle. There we go, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, cheers mate. We made it. We did the trailer, that's for sure. It's uh, a few rocks there and all the rest of it, but not too bad. Now it's Barney's turn. That's a bit of a steep angle. You did well with that camper trailer, mate. And down he goes and he makes that look easy. Oh, another one. Giving the old bazooka a bit of a wash, boys. Sounds so good underwater. Well, the shadows are getting longer, and that means just one thing it's time to head to camp. Hey, gents, once we get through this creek, it's getting a bit late in the day. What does everyone say to a cold beer and a campsite? Maybe get a fire going. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. Oh, I suppose you could twist my rubber arm, mate. Sounds bloody good. I'll be right into that, mate. Sounds like a great idea. I'm surprised you said that, Barney. I thought you wouldn't want to, mate. No, of course you do. There seems to be plenty of water around at the moment, which must be left over from a recent cyclone because with an average of 300 days of sun per year, Rockhampton also suffers from some serious dry spells. We, however, have seemed to pick the perfect time to come because everything is lush, colourful and full of life. Not much further and we've reached our camp for the night. It's a nice bit of flat ground with grass, plenty of firewood, it sounds like the perfect stop. Alright, that's the fire going. 
I'm gonna get camp set up, swag out, awning out, <laughs> crack myself a coldie. You can just hear another coldie opening over there. <laughs> too good. Now, I'm not too familiar with setting up campers, but look at me go. And let's face it, folks, if I can do it by myself, then anyone can do it. This is what the four-wheel drive life is all about. Camping out bush, a campfire, a few mates and some beers. What more could you want? Sometimes you'd like the perfect ending to a night. I've got the perfect but, ending, But mate. tonight, Sean, has got it. Well, there's <laughs> one thing, actually, and that's that a good, done. solid meal, which we're just about to cook. Yep. Weave your magic, yep. Yep. maestro. All right. Well, we're in Rockhampton, the beef capital of Australia. What sort of meal are you going to do in Rockhampton? Well, of course, you're going to do beef. We're not going to do any old beef, we're going to do the old surf and turf. Now we've got local banana prawns in the Waco, but I'm not just doing that, am I? I'm doing a chimichurri sauce. Now that took me about an hour and a half to work out what chimichurri means, but I asked a mate, he's a really meat and two veg sort of guy, and for him to say that chimichurri was all right, he sort of said to me, look, Sean, I ditched the barbie sauce for the chimichurri one night, so I said, oh, heck, I'm going to have to try this. So it's probably the perfect time to try it with a bit of, oh, look mate. at this, mate. Mate, you have got... You've got some really good ingredients and then you've got some what the f for crying in a bucket is it's this, the mate? stuff that this one eats. Yeah, what well, it is. <laughs> What's it doing on the table? No, well, this is what I'm going to make. What I'm is this? Make... I don't even know what that is. Coriander, but, uh, lightly what, dried. What am I going to do? I'm going to make a sauce up. I'm out. I'm going to make a sauce. I'm out. I'm going in your fridge. It's a chimichurri sauce, I think. Oh! I have hit the gold mine, brothers. There's me prawns. Give Look at here. that. Give those here. <laughs> Banana prawns. Got a kilo of those. So you might be wondering why I've got the steak out on the bench. Yes, please. You do? Yeah. You yeah. Sure? Absolutely, mate. You don't put chili around the ring this time. No, no good. I did not put chili around your <laughs> ring, mate. No, not this time. <laughs> so you might be wondering why I've got the steak out on the bench. Now, I've actually had that out for about 15 minutes. Oh. The idea is to get it down at room temperature. You see, yeah, you, wanna, you wanna do what you do with best yeah, of those. Yeah, I've got this all cleaning this on mint. I don't know how to do that one yet. No. Um, parsley, let's try this I'm one. I'm gonna get right out of the way here, mate. So I've got a bunch of herbs, basically. Start ah. with, uh, go, go a fist of parsley. That's, oh. that's what you wanna start with. There you go, mate, look at this. Now. One of the things you want to do with all these herbs, if you're making this at home, you'd probably use one of them um, whizzers. You could call yeah, it a whizzer. I don't know, mate. I, yeah, a no. processor or something Cement like that. Cement mixer. Just, but we're not, we're not at home. Uh, we've got a kitchen, which is fantastic. It's actually you've got a bloody good kitchen, I if know, I do say so myself. I know. It's Look a, at that thing. Cut them as fine as you can. I didn't quite cut this one as fine as I could, but you sort of get the idea. Cut it really fine. There's about a cup full of parsley there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Go seven cloves of garlic. Where's Barney? Barney, get in here and have a crack at this, mate. Just rip the head off one of these bad boys. So what I'm doing here, I'm just, I'm basically squashing all this garlic and I want to try and cut it up as <laughs> fine as I can, I suppose. There you guys go with the prawns. Prawns are done, bro. All right, well, I've got the garlic all done. Oh, that is superb. All right. Prawns, there's bits of prawn everywhere over here. Yes, one of you fellas want to go get that barbecue plate sorted? Mate, do you want to get that sorted? Back of the D-Max, mate. Back of the D-Max. All right, so I've got garlic, I've got parsley. Just give us one of those then. Do you think one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have you got there? Uh, pepper. pepper, yep. Go go about a quarter of a teaspoon if you're going to put some pepper in. Quarter of a teaspoon. That's just... Just put the pepper in the pot. Now, do you want me to address this uh, steak because because it's, it sears the oil and the oil becomes bitter and horrible. You oil the thing you're going to cook on the barbecue plate. We're not going to, we're not going to be too snicknickety here. And put it on and then just massage it in. And that just is the way to prepare your steak. This in. Okay, mate, let's just, uh, for the folks at home that want to want to know about this chimichurri or whatever you call it, yeah, what's yeah. in that? What's in this bowl? That's a good question, Graham. Yep. I oh, know that's a good question. Can you answer it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got some red wine vinegar, so you, you want to put that in there. No, yeah, not yeah. yet. Two, get that two, tab for you two tablespoons. Whoop. Now, do you want me to get in there and just give that a good old bit of love? Definitely do that. Get yep. in there now. Yep. yep. And then the last thing you want to do is put a bit of olive oil. I've got, oh, if I'm lucky, I've got a quarter of a cup left yeah, in go, here. Yeah, go, go, go. There we go, that's all that. A little bit of pepper as well. And that's a chimichurri sauce. That's mixed to perfection, brother. Yeah, all right, what's next? Fantastic. All right, now, we've got Barney's got the barbecue plate on. So we're going to get the steaks down there, the prawns. The prawns will take about oh 30 seconds, God. 30 seconds to cook. These steaks, a little bit longer, but again, we're going to make them still moving. So let's go put these oh, straight on. so good. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's, that that's is nice. Some, that is some meaty goodness right righto, there. Righto, righto. Where's Barney? On his way. How you doing, bud? There he is, got the prawn. Don't you oh, be eating them. What are you doing? Put them down. Put them down. Here you go, grab a plate of these, boys. Oh, hot all damn. Right, all right, all right, this is where it all gets real. Make a dragon retire, man. How does this chimichurri work? Well, we just grab a bit and put it on top. Is that right? Yeah, just grab a bit, straight on top. There you go. Look, 
This is like a gourmet kitchen. Look at this. That looks delightful. This looks like one of the better meals we've ever cooked. And to be honest, it is a quite an easy one. You just grab a lot of green stuff, yeah. put it in there, yeah. put it in there, and then you put a bit of chili, prawns, beef. This is the heart of Queensland. We've can got I, the beef and beef. Can, we've got a big day on the tracks tomorrow. Can we get this in? A couple more beers and get by the fire. You're talking too much. Like Let's move sound. on. I like the sound of that, mate. <laughs> It's another one of those 300 days of sun here in Rockhampton. We've got an awesome day planned because we're heading to the Byfield National Park. It's all eyes on the track here. We're concentrating because it's very overgrown through here. Often when you go into an area, you have to come back out the way you came. That may seem straightforward, but obstacles in reverse can sometimes tell a different story. Hey boys, the uh, entry to camp yesterday was a little bit interesting, but of course in order to get back out, we're going to do the same thing, but in reverse. Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge getting back up that back, mate. Yeah, I think we'll do too, mate, but we can only try, um, and we're all else failed, but a winch. Lead the way, mate, and we'll see what we get out of it, eh? Do that. If I do get stuck, uh, I might get your voice to jump out, Yeah, mate, I'll be there. Let's do right. Ever reliable. I don't even know where the exit is. Oh, there's happened to be a big log sticking out on the left-hand side, which is not what I want to see. It's right where I wanted to turn in and get a better angle on things. Ooh, it's quite deep on the old exit point here. Really quite deep, in fact. I might just try and set up here and then just have a better go at it. It's a much better angle. Okay. What Graham has done here is he set himself up nice and straight. So I think that's a key with any IFS vehicle in particular is to set them up nice and straight on any obstacle. That'll cause less damage and also get more traction to the wheel. So we'll give it one more attempt. It's really steep, really. Um, there's not a lot of traction here. So if he can get himself in a good position to winch, That'll be good. If he drives it, it'll be a miracle. But this exit is just too steep and the loose rocks here are not providing any traction. I think we'll have a winch from there. Graham's decided to get the winch out because he's in a good position and we don't want to dig away this bank any more than we have to. How good are these little wireless remotes for your winch? This one here is kind of cool because you can, you can put the cable in if you want to. If you run out of batteries, because these things need a battery, so it's got a fail safe there, you plug your cable in and run it out as per normal, but otherwise you just take it out, hit the wireless switch, put your little wireless receiver in the other end, and as you can see, I can go in now. So cool. I was not far from driving that. Man, that is so steep. How good is that tree there? <laughs> that tree's right in the right spot. That's perfect. How cool is this little part of the world? Okay, I reckon Sean has got his work cut out for him here, primarily because of the tight angle he's got to try and get that trailer on to come back up and into this. But 35's locked, I reckon he's got half a chance here. I'm gonna call him through. If not, there's a tree directly in front of this track. It's like it was, sorry, it's like it was put there on purpose. Let's get into it. This is so cool, a track that's actually a creek. You don't get a lot of tracks like this, but it's a fair dinkum track. It's got entry and exit. They're going to test me out towing this trailer, that's for sure. I think my plan here is just to get the vehicle and trailer situated where I can do an easy winch. I don't want to go too hard, I don't want to break stuff. So, let's just see what I can do. This is a very tight turn for me, and I'm not going to have enough momentum to get very far at all. To jackknife that a little bit. Yeah, keep going. This seems like a good position for a winch pull. Now look. Got a fair old winch job ahead of us here with Sean coming up out of that creek. Steep. He's got a lot of weight on the back trailer. Um, so what we're going to do here, I was able to, well, I nearly drove that thing, so I didn't really need much of a winch at all, but I was able just to use a single line pull coming up out of there, but Sean is going to need what we call a double line pull. And to do that, you use one of these. It's the old, the old snatch block. Basically, you're on the rope in through there, lock it up, shackle, back onto your tree trunk protector. And the physical forces behind it suggest that by doing this, you're actually increasing your pulling power, um, halving your loads, there's a whole heap of science behind it, but the basics are if you've got a really heavy load, 
and you've got to come up a steep hill, anywhere where your winch is going to be at the edge of its capabilities, always run a snatch block through. You can actually use a few of these. So what we could do, we could go through this one, back to the vehicle with another one, and then back to your anchor point. And it really does give you so much more pulling power should you need it. With the double line winch pull, it really does make it easy work for the Grunday winch that I'm running. I don't always take the sensible option, but in this case I did, and I'm pretty happy I did as well. You know, I put some huge Ks on my Bridgestones, off-road and on-road, all around Australia, but I get maximum tyre life out of my tyres because of a few tricks that I use. Now, I make a habit of checking my tyres after every single hard day of four-wheel driving, basically just to check that I haven't damaged a tyre or gotten mud in the bead and I'm losing pressure. I also make sure that I clean most of the mud from my wheels when I'm back on the tarmac and I bring my tyre pressures back to normal, even if the rest of the four-wheel drive remains dirty. That mud throws wheel balance out massively. Also, I get my tyres balanced and rotated every 10,000 kilometres. I reckon you look after your tyres and they'll look after you. Onward we go, edging our way closer and closer to the coast. But first, I've got something in store. Hey fellas, the locals um, told me about a track which is actually just around here, a little loop track. It, um, it's a bit challenging, they said. Uh, definitely don't bring trailers down it, so um, I reckon we go and have a look at it. Maybe unhitch a trailer real quick and have a play. Yeah, it'll take a bit long to unhitch that trailer, won't it, mate? Why don't we just do it later on, or is it pretty quick to do the trailer? Oh, it literally takes two seconds to undo the trailer, mate. So um, yeah, we can do it now if you like. Yeah, that's all it takes. I'll pull up here, mate. I'm just taking the trailer off because it literally is a 30 second job if you take your time. That's what I like about these camper trailers. You can take them around, you can take them off when you go and do some hard tracks, and you've got the comforts of a camper trailer when you get back to camp. So easy. It's as simple as that. I've unleashed the beast. Old Sean Oak, pretty proud of his suspension setup on the 80 there, and he's just seen these big old wombat holes. I think they were actually dug by a local club out here. Let's have a bit of fun in. And well, like a kid with a new toy, he wants to have a bit of a play, so I said I'd jump out and get a photo for his wall. I'm just gonna count him through here into these big wombat holes, and we'll see how that suspension really does work. Let's watch this. Righto, mate. Woo. Oh, fully sick, mate. Oh. pretty cool. This thing is just flexing through and the cool thing is I just feel completely safe and stable in here. If I was in the 30 it'd be like that but I'm just walking through this sort of stuff. As you can see when I drive the 80 series through these ruts all the wheels are pretty much touching the ground. This might be the hard bit. What that does is gives traction to each of the tyres making it really easy and really safe for me to overcome obstacles like this. Just eats this sort of stuff for breakfast and that's the difference with coil springs I suppose it just allows you to do that you set your suspension upright and um, yeah super surprising what it can do the suspension I'm running on the 80 series is a superior engineering 4 inch superflex kit with the raw shock absorbers and as you can see it's making light work of those ruts we're going to continue along this loop track and pick the trailer up when we were done what have we got down here Ooh la la uh, we got a uh, river crossing here, boys. Yeah, right. Sounds good, mate. I can't see much through this grass at the moment, but oh yeah, here we go. Holy heck, that's pretty deep. Yeah, it's got a bit of a hole in the middle of that one. Screw it, Bruce. Graham nailed that crossing perfectly. Yes. Just the right amount of momentum. <laughs> I'm going to follow suit, and I too have the departure in my sights. For most water crossings, I usually pick second gear, low range. I find that allows me to tackle these things nice and slow, but should I need power, I can put my foot down and find plenty of it. <laughs> that wasn't too bad at all, a bit of fun. On to the next obstacle. I'm not entirely sure where my wheels should go here, but I'm... Whoops, I just found out. Yep, that's pretty much me. That's steep. Look at that. Feel that steepness. What you got there, mate? Straight down. Yeah, mate, this is. It's straight down to the belly of the beast down here. I, I asked that because I could see your diff quite clearly. Underbody protection, an absolute must on these tracks. Absolute must. This is one technical track. 
All right, it looks so close, man. Graham seems to be having some difficulty here, and I'm not surprised. I might get that winch out, eh? Nah, not yet. This is a super, super steep little hill, and the problem is that you've got a bunch of tree roots in here, big rocks, so it's going to be trying to climb a lot of things at the same time, and it's also off cambered, so it's a really tough hill. Mate, um, do your best. Nah, that's me. Graham's decided to go for the winch and I don't blame him. You saw the impact when he hit an exposed root and stopped any momentum he had. He's really picking the sensible option and going for the winch. It's a straightforward winch pull up here and then we'll be back on the main dirt road. Graham's up, now my turn in the 80. Oh, it is steep. Roll on attraction too. This one I'm in first gear low range with the rear locker on. What I want to do here is just have a bite at it and see how far up I can make it. Oh, how close is that? That nearly made it to the top. With a little bit of reverse and a bit of right foot, I reckon I've got this. Oh, too easy. How good's the 80? And now for Barney and the Spartan. Now with his tyres on the right line, with two lockers, 33s and a heavy right foot, Barney's got this. Oh, nice drive mate, well done. How you doing? Woohoo! Righto, now it's time to hook the trailer back up and head to the coast. We're airing down, ready to hit the sandy tracks that take us down to Nine Mile Beach and our camp for the night. I'm going to go straight down to about 16 psi. I know there's a really soft section of sand up here, and I've also put the trailer tyres down to match. Okay, here we go. We've got some sand beneath our tyres, and it's super soft. Pretty soft up here, boys. Real soft, in fact, actually, it's only that entrance. Oh, straight, there's a one bad hole. We're going to need some momentum through here. <laughs> Fuck a fucking Bronco. Even with the low tyre pressures, I'm struggling through here. <laughs> He's a bit foggy. Yeah, I'm a full noise, mate. Second gear, low range. Hard one. You got to turn your traction control off. In sand. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey. With 1.7 ton of trailer on the back. I've lost all momentum. Yeah, that's me. I'm um, stopped here, mate. And now, Barney will have to stop too. You know, I was having a bit of difficulty getting the old camper trailer up this sandy track. It's really quite eroded away. Super soft like talcum powder. So I'm actually reverse back down. I'm going to put a snatch strap on him and just see how we go. It's really soft, but he's able to creep forward ever so slightly. So with a little bit of assistance, we might be okay. So we'll get a snatch strap out and we'll give it a go. Well, the only way forward from now is to get the D-Max to reverse back down the hill Connector strap, this should really be one heck of a test for the D-Max. What I've done here is I've used a tree trunk protector as an equaliser strap. I want to be pulling from both chassis rails here because there's going to be a fair bit of force at play. Graham's going to be pulling at 110%. Um, it stops me bending anything and also gives a much safer pull, so I should do it. Let's give it a go and just suck it and see, eh? Yeah, cool mate, I've just got to work out what to do. It's been a long time since I've been on this side of the strap. <laughs> That's good comedy, I'll play that. All right, I'm going to get going, you ready? Yeah, go for it, mate. Second gear, manual mode. Roma really want to give everything the D-Max has got if he wants to fool me and 1.7 tonnes of trailer up a really steep and soft sand. Come on, old girl. You can do it. I won't lie. Look, I had my doubts. A four-wheel drive plus a trailer on a sandy hill is a fair ask for any rig. But <laughs> once I got momentum, that increased torque on the new D-Max really came into play. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah Honestly, combined with the auto, Oh, I was just a passenger. It did it easily. <laughs> what a wait! With Barney following closely behind, we've made it to the coast, and it's just an awesome sight. We've arrived at this place we're calling home for the night. 
The Capricorn Coast is officially defined as the coastal area between the mouth of Waterpark Creek and the mouth of the Fitzroy River. It gets its name because the region straddles a tropic of Capricorn. Hey, either that's the ocean or someone sprung a leak, boys. Mate, how good is that sight? You know when you've been out in the bush for a couple of days to see the ocean? Oh, it's a blessing, mate. Look at this. That <laughs> geez, the tide's out too. Good timing. There's not a person to be seen, Graham. This is spectacular, buddy. I'm shocked. All right, boys, this little steeper sand here will get us into camp for the night. This is home. This is good, mate. You can't complain about the view, that's for sure. Oh, crikey. She's a bit squeezy, boys. We may have to do a bit of jiggery perkery here. Hope no one minds me snoring tonight. We're going to quickly get set up for the night and enjoy this dying light. Waking up with a gentle breeze on your face and the sound of waves crashing in the distance is one of my all-time favourite things in life. And that's why I'm thankful I've got a four-wheel drive to take me to places just like this. What an epic place to camp. Well, how good is this? This is actually Sean O's second home. He's been coming up here since he was about 13 years old. We're not actually at Five Rocks yet, which is the bit I've been looking forward to. It's up over that headland down there. But this isn't as good as Five Rocks. I can't wait to get to Five Rocks. Now, I'm going to go make a cup of coffee here. Mate. Cup of coffee? Yeah. Let's do it. Well that's enough morning chit chat, it's time to get back in the saddle because last night we talked about visiting a little inlet right near here so hopefully I can catch a fish. Alright now lads, I don't know about yourselves but that was one of the better campsites I've ever stayed in. Yeah mate, sensational. It doesn't get much better than beach side camping and to be up high and looking over the beach, that's pretty special mate. Mate, that was a ripper spot. Thanks for the invite, boys. Awesome. We're heading to a little place called Corio Bay. Now, it's a big favourite of mine, and I've been fishing in this place for a long, long time. So when you come up here, I really suggest you bring a little tinny and explore some of those reaches. You do find barra, crabs, all sorts of tropical speedsters up through here. But now we've got to get off this beach, and again, the sand is super soft. Traction's going to be hard to find. My turn and I'm into it. But I've got the trailer, so it's all about traction and momentum here. Yes, made it. Up you come, Barney. I was just looking at the VMS here, and mate, it looks like the little bay comes in. It's a little bit of a creek, and I wouldn't mind um, having a flick. What do you reckon? Yeah, 100%, mate. No, I think that's a good idea. Is this it just here on the left hand side? Yeah, that must be it, mate. Um, yeah, let's pull up beside it and have a look. Looks like it's about. It centimetre deep, is that right? Oh no, it's got some depth down this end mate. You might catch a fish here. I'll pull up. The flatty challenge mate. We've come as far as you can before being cut off by salt water and mangroves. But you know me, I just love to wet a line. Sometimes you just can't help yourself but stop and have a quick fish. These little places around Australia are amazing. I always carry a little bait caster with me wherever I go. It stays behind the seat. And every now and again, you get an opportunity to flick a lure. And every now and again, Graham gets the opportunity to act like a clown. While I've got my back turned, he's up to no good in the 80. Meanwhile, I'm not having much luck with the fish, so we decide to get going. I tell you what, it's on now. It's on. It's really slippery. What the hell is that? So funny. So funny. What is that? What the hell is that? <laughs> Got you, buddy. Time to head back out to Nine Mile and northward towards Five Rocks. You gotta be a little bit careful. This beach, not so much, but some of these tropical beaches up here, they get some really big tides. And where the beaches are quite skinny, like where we are now, we've got the dunes just on this side, and you can see where the tide's coming up to now. You just gotta be a bit careful when you come down them to go exploring, like we have on a low tide. And we're now returning as the tide's coming in. You can actually, and I have been, trapped before. 
that uh, obviously that tide comes right up and hits the dunes, you're stuck back there and you've got to wait there all day for the tide to go out so you can get back again. Now, it's never a big deal, but it's something to be aware of if you are time poor or you haven't told someone back at camp that you're just zipping up to have a fish. Imagine that, you don't come back all day. I suppose that's where communications come in, a little bit of planning. But yeah, just keep an eye on the tides up here. They do get quite big. Righto boys, this exit looks mighty darn soft. I'm gonna get into it, give it a go. It's not only me, the boys have also been commenting on just how good the new D-Max looks. I'm stoked with it, it looks tough and performs. What more could you ask for? That corner there mate, it looks like it's gonna be a hard one. The corner's the problem, because you wash off all your speed, after that you're done. Okay, it's my turn, come on. Yeah, I'll give it a go, see what happens eh? That corner's what's got me. Not a chance, mate. Not a chance, eh? As I made the turn, I slowed down and sank right down in the softest part of the sand. I backed down to give it another little go, but it's just not gonna happen. This is way too soft. I'm gonna need to back right down here, and I reckon I'll get Barney to hook up the snatch strap on the back of the Spartan. That way, Graham doesn't need to come all the way down the sand dune. Hopefully, this will work. I'm all ready, let's do it. We're doing it. Almost, almost. Nah, Barney's gone down in that corner as well. What do you want to do, buddy? The idea now is to try and get Barney out of where he is by using the max tracks to get him up onto the harder sand. Then we might have to try and winch Sean up, I think. This little corner, it's just proving to be deadly because it's so soft and you're washing off all your momentum as you go around it. But we'll give these a bill. Let's see how we go. Max tracks to the rescue. Get me we've unhooked Barney from the snatch and we've got the Max tracks in position. And now we're locked and loaded. Here he goes, and it's as easy as that. Barney's on his way. Well, what we gotta do now is just put the Max Tracks under my vehicle. What I've actually done is just driven about a tire width back just so I can put the Max Tracks in it and I'll get straight up on those Max Tracks. What I think will happen though, if I tried to drive it, as soon as I got past the Max Tracks, I'll sink. So what I'll do is join two snatch traps together. Barney's on semi sort of hard ground, so if we can get enough traction after I get out of the sand, he might be able to pull me up. That's the plan anyway. Yep, that'll do you. Have a go from there. All right, here goes nothing. We're gonna give it another go. And again. And we did it, that's an epic recovery. They did it. So there you go, a little bit of perseverance really pays. Barney kept having little bites at it, we'd get a couple of metres each time, reposition the max tracks, and made it look easy in the end. A little bit of hard work, but we got there. And uh, that's thinking outside the box if you ask me. Time to make our way to our final destination for this adventure, Five Rocks. Looking out the side of the truck here at those mountains, it looks like something from a prehistoric movie really is a pristine part of the world, isn't it? Yeah, mate, she's largely untouched up here. So close to major centres as well. I mean, Rocky's not exactly small. We're only, we're only, what, 45 minutes from Rocky? Yeah, it's not too far at all, mate, but um, you sort of, you 
you don't go through Byfield to get anywhere, it's sort of a one-stop destination. You, know, you have to be travelling to Byfield to come here, so um, I don't think it gets the traffic that other places get. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Mate, if we keep following this one down and um, go past Stockyard Point, we'll go down to Five Rocks, I think. I've heard a lot about that spot, very keen to see it. And here we are. We've arrived at the amazing Five Rocks, and it never disappoints. Have a look at that. Hey, I gotta say, just as I come over that hill, I saw the water. This is one of those ones I wanted to tick off my bucket list for a while, the old Five Rocks, because you love Five Rocks. I've heard it from a few locals, I've heard it from people at shows, and I've never been here. Crack and blaze, mate, absolutely stunning. I've been coming here since I was a kid, and I tell you what, I never get bored of this site. Five Rocks simply gets its name from the five rocky islands that have eroded over time from the headland. It's a great place to bring your four-wheel drive and a great place to have a fish because of the extensive rock platforms. What you want to do is get yourself right out to the end, cast a few lures. I'll tell you what, even if you don't catch anything, this is one amazing place. Mate, you weren't lying. It's a place good, good, good place, isn't it? Tell you what, Rockhampton, the tough track's out the back of Rocky. Then, of course, you've got Nine Mile down here in Byfield, where we were last night. To come to here, Five Rocks, absolutely sensational. I'm not lying when I say this has been on my bucket list for a long time because you've told me about it many, many moons ago and I finally got down here to check it out myself and, yeah, it didn't disappoint. No, mate. This place is sick. Really is the ultimate beef to reef sort of experience. It is. <laughs> and, it is. and here we are. What'd you think? I thought it was amazing. I thought yeah? the campsites, the food, this, great trip. Love yeah. it. You've got to see CQ. You like what I did there? I did, mate. You've you become a local already. Yeah, mate, bit of CQ. <laughs> Folks, we'll catch you next time with Full Drive Action for now. You got any fishing gear? I reckon we're going to go get a couple of bobbers out. Let's go and get it. Can you kick that rock out of the way? Yep. Is that a wheel chop now? <laughs> <laughs> Everything has been sourced nice and locally. We've got some prime rib beef fillet here. It's um, local local beef. I'm gonna do it again because I'm not enjoying what I'm doing right now. I've still got pink eye. Slightly do. So I had pink eye the other day. I've still slightly got it. I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me how I got pink eye. Well, mate. Good. <laughs> 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 jokes are, no. jokes, jokes are. Otherwise, we're supposed to be rubbed by knee, aren't I? I'm gonna run the camera guys over and just go to jail. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Case file 52 for Cahill murders. One second. All right. The yeah. line, don't cross it. Don't, don't come over. <laughs> I was trying to be all cool, but I was like, oh! <laughs> My drink bottle fell off here and landed down on my nuts. <laughs> Barney's here with us. Yeah. He knows his way around a short, fat thing. Just... <laughs> very close friends and we felt that we should, <laughs> you know, spend the night very closely together, but not quite too close, you know? Best is a friends, it's the way to do it. You know, how do you make reef and beef better? You can't. How, how do you make it better? Well, too much fury, apparently, so... There you go. That's so what, like asking, how do, you make, how do you make a first date better? Well... well I, I'm gonna, I still don't know the answer to that, mate. Who am I lying to? You can't draw air all like this, and your eyes are like slits. I know what I want to say, and then just nothing comes out. It just goes, My dog's name is Didge. He's an English staffy. Absolute cracker of a dog. Who's got a staffy out there? Absolute cracker of dogs, and you'll know what I say. Well, lunch is done, and as per usual, I'm packing the camera crew's gear in. I don't mind, though. You know, the old D-Max has taken me all over Australia. The talkie three-liter D-Bowl, little D-Bowl. Okay, here we go. One take, one done.